the Harvey Norman Lounge, Heather Lundbrook joins us now to talk about her registered charity, Bark NZ, which aims to reduce the national dog bite statistics in children aged 12 years and younger in New Zealand. Welcome, Heather. Thank you for having us. Absolute pleasure to have you here. Very important issue too, a very important service. So are dog bite stats in New Zealand on the rise? Yes, they are. Year on year they, they increase. Unfortunately in New Zealand, our stats are actually around dog-related injuries, so it's really difficult to pin down where we actually are with dog bites. Or is but it they've fallen over a dog or something? Indeed, so it's anything, any injury that has um, resulted from a dog. So you could be walking down the road and a dog might bark behind its gate and you might stumble and roll your ankle and that still goes down on the dog bite stats. And that counts, so that's interesting. So why do you think they're on the rise? Well, pet ownership is also on the rise, so it kind of makes sense that dog-related injuries are on the rise as well. But in particular, ch child dog bite, um, Unfortunately, there's just not enough education out there. We, mm. They get taught the basics, mm. but there's a lot more to it as far as dog communication is concerned. So what sort of programs does Bark NZ offer? We have our in-school programs, which is called Dogwise Kiwi Kids, and we teach children the tools for safe introductions and interactions with dogs. So that's not only their own dogs in their own home, but dogs that they might come into contact with out in the public. That's very important too, isn't it? Indeed. What made you decide to set it up? So, well, there was a need. Um, we are having a lot of children child dog bites and would like to reduce that. Um, initially it was set up as a business but we realised the people that really needed us were the people that couldn't afford to pay for the service so mm -hmm. we turned it into a children's charity and now we're reaching tens of thousands of children every year. It's interesting really isn't it because you think it's just going to be uh, obvious that children should always ask if they can pet your dog but that's not necessarily the case is it? Absolutely and I think we do assume that they know that as well so we don't really reinforce it. We also encourage children to ask ask the adults that they're with before going up to talk to a stranger about their dog. So they are also having another adult, another set of eyes to keep them safe as well. So mm. they can pick up, because we can't always trust the dog owner to really understand what's going on. We need to take some responsibility as parents and adults as well. Right, and it can be how the dog's approaching a whole lot of things, can't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. The environment, they could be tired, they could might not be feeling well. So there's a whole mm. lot of things that, that come into play. You've brought Mo along today, who's looking incredibly stressed there. <laughs> Uh, he's absolutely just the most gorgeous dog. Uh, should we be wary in signs of our, uh, in our own pet? What signs should we sure. be looking out for? So the, the thing with human behaviour is that we tend to only listen when the signs are obvious, blatant. So things like growling, mm. bearing teeth, snapping. Ears back. Absolutely, got those absolutely. Yeah. But we miss the more important early signs. Things like dilated pupils, tense smiles, panting, avoidance. Now. He's not avoiding me at all, he's just chilled out because he's been hanging out in the studio this morning. But we should be teaching our children not to bother a dog that is asleep or resting. Mm. What do you think makes them bite? Usually a, a number of things added together. So the environment, the way the dog's feeling. We expect our pets to be really tolerant and our pets do have to put up with a lot of challenging behaviours from our children. Yes but they're only going to be tolerant until the day that they're not. Exactly. And those are the days that ruin lives. And let's be honest, we all have those grumpy days ourselves Indeed, as adults. absolutely. And so tell me a little bit about Bark Buddies. I mean, these are the, these are the dogs that help with your programs. Sure, so they're our demo dogs. So this is Bark Buddy Mo, and he, he goes into um, a number of our programs, so preschools, primary schools, and community, community groups. Um, all of the Bark Buddies have to sit in independent assessment to be able to be a Bark Buddy. So anybody's dog can be a Bark Buddy? Anybody's dog can be a bark buddy if they've gone through the training and recruitment process and passed the ind independent dog assessment. Right. We can't have dogs that are banned, breed or registered as menacing because our insurances don't cover that and we need to be able to protect not only the community but also our volunteers right. and our dogs. Okay. What about this guy over here because he's been excessively good? This is <laughs> Emery. So bark buddy Emery has a very important job. So he's not real but he has a very real job. He likes to help children that are scared of dogs. Dogs. Often we have children that are so paralytically mm. scared of dogs that we can't introduce a dog, a real dog straight away. So we introduce Emery and he comes along and helps support mm -hmm. the right way to meet and interact with a dog. Oh, well, that's great. Well, that's great because the thing is, you can't you can't just expect. We've got a small dog. We think, how can people be scared of that? But people are scared of small dogs. Indeed, yes. Yeah. So the scientific term is cynophobia. So that's an abnormal fear of mm. dogs. This is the type of fear that prevents particularly children from living their life freely and um, outwardly. Adults tend to have. 
um, learnt tools to avoid situations where there might be dogs and children without having support from family or having some tools to be able to keep themselves safe or, or build their confidence they just stop visiting friends don't want to go and visit families and, and have the outdoor barbecues in, in summer so they're really missing out on a big part of that childhood and that's not what anybody wants at all it's funny I was talking to Emery before and I was I was patting him like he was an actual real dog but he's so realistic looking indeed so what do parents at home need to do to make sure that their their own well their children are safe around dogs and their own dogs are safe as well absolutely for children so the biggest suggestion is to introduce some tools to keep everybody in the family safe and happy now if there's two siblings going at each other and taunting each other we tend to step in as parents and make sure that they cut that behaviour yes. out. We're less likely to jump in and sort it out when there's a dog involved because the response from the dog is quiet. Mm. So there can be a whole lot of signs that we're missing because until they make that sound then we just assume everything's okay. okay. So researching that body language, being aware of your own dog. Pay attention. Absolutely. So there's no point supervising a child around a dog if you don't know what you're looking for. Fantastic. Heather, that's been very enlightening and, and thank you so much for coming in today. It is so important that we all learn how how to keep ourselves dogs safe and for your furry friends you can pick up a sticky king washable hair pet fur and lint remover and get the cafe special deal by calling the number on screen